The RNA splicing is a co-transcriptional modification process where introns that are non-coding regions or genes are excised out and the remaining exons are joined together to generate mRNA. If this is the pre-mRNA molecule with introns in the middle, then we splice the introns out and join the exons together. So this is the RNA splicing in simple sense. Here we see where the DNA molecule and from this DNA molecule we get the synthesis of pre-mRNA molecule. And in the same transcription the pre-RNA molecule or mRNA molecule is transformed into mRNA. And during this phase that's from pre-mRNA to mRNA we have many things going on that are co-transcriptional modifications. First is the 5' capping, second is the splicing or RNA splicing and third one is 3 end processing. And here we are more concerned with the RNA splicing or simply splicing. Before getting to the RNA splicing process in detail, let's have a look on requirements for RNA splicing. First of all, we need spliceosome complex, which is made up of SNRNP molecules and non-SNRNP molecules. The SNRNP stands for small nuclear ribonucleoproteins. The SNRNPs include U1 SNRNP, U2, U4, U5, U6. Whereas the non-SNRNPs include plethora of proteins like PRP that's pre-mRNA processing proteins which includes PRP5, PRP2, PRP28, PRP16, PRP43 and we have other proteins also like BRR2, SUB2, NTC, CWC25, YJU2 proteins and many more. Now let's get to the detailed process of RNA splicing. In this diagram we have the pre-RNA or pre-mRNA molecule which contains two exons, exon 1 and exon 2. And in between the exons we have the introns in the middle. And we see we have the GU sequence towards the exon 1 which is the 5' splicing site. The AG sequence on the right towards exon 2 is the 3' splicing site. And we have adenine nucleotide in the middle shown in the diagram which is denoted as A star. And this adenine nucleotide highlighted here is the branch site during the splicing process. Now to start a process first of all U1 comes in and binds at the GU sequence towards the 5' splicing site as shown in the animation. This is termed as E complex or early complex. Then U2AF65 binds towards the 3' end and recruits U2 SNRNP. This U2 binds at the branch site at adenine nucleotide shown in the diagram and along with that we have the recruitment of PRP5 and sub2 molecules. PRP5 associates with ATP in PRP ATP form in order to mediate and energize the splicing process. This PRP5 proofreads U2 branch site interaction whereas sub2 helps in spliceosome assembly. And during this event the SF3A also comes in and binds with the pre-mRNA molecule. After all these bindings and interactions we get the conformational change in pre-mRNA molecule where 5 splicing site is being brought in close proximity to 3 splicing site thus forming a loop as shown in the diagram. And this complex is termed as A complex now or pre-spliceosome complex. In the next step PRP28 ATP binds the pre-mRNA molecule and this PRP28 then recruits the tri-SNRNP. Tri-SNRNP comes in and binds slightly towards the 5' splicing site as shown in the animation. This tri-SNRNP is composed of U4, U5 and U6 SNRNPs. And here we also get the recruitment of PRP8 protein towards the complex as shown in the animation. The PRP8 protein is one of the largest proteins in PRP proteins. This PRP8 interacts with many spliceosomal proteins and it also interacts with 5' and 3' splice sites. So the complex formed is now called the complex B which is precatalytic spliceosome. In the next step we see BRR2 ATP and SNU114 GTP comes in and binds with the complex B. The PRP8, BRR2 and SNU114 are integral components of U5 SNRNP. This BRR2 disrupts the U4-U6 base pairing and U2-U6 base pairing. 
In this animation, we can see just after BRR2 binding, the U1 and U4 leaves the spliceosome. And at the same time, a protein complex associated with PRP19, named the 19 complex or simply NTC, also joins the spliceosome. This NTC protein then activates the spliceosome complex. So at the end, we get the B activated complex. In the next step, PRP2 comes in and binds, which makes release of SF3A and also aids in recruiting the CWC25 and YJU2 proteins to the spliceosome complex, as shown in the animation. Now, this makes us the catalytically active spliceosome. From here, the catalysis occurs. Here we have the pre mRNA molecule. In order to understand the catalysis reactions, we are not going to show here spliceosome complex, which is actually present here. So after we have the catalytically active spliceosome, first of all catalytic spliceosome splices at 5' splicing site near or downstream of GU sequence, with which first transesterification reaction is mediated, while PGU binds with A branch site shown in the diagram. In the next step, spliceosome splices at the AG site, which is upstream of AG site at 3' end, where OH of exon 1 attacks the splice site. So from this reaction, we get the ligation of two exons. So we have now the complete mRNA molecule. And also we have excised the intron out in the laryate form. So this is how the catalysis is mediated. Now getting back to the diagrammatic representation. So after catalysis, the laryate structure remains with the spliceosome as shown in the diagram. And we are still to ligate the exons together. So, in order to mediate these processes, the PRP16 comes in and binds with these structures, which releases CWC25 and YJU2 proteins. And in the same step, the ligation takes place, that means two exons are joined together. But still the laryate intron is bound to spliceosome, and we still have the mRNA to be released. So, to mediate this, the PRP22 binds and releases the mRNA molecule first. And after that, PRP43 binds, which disrupts the intron laryate spliceosome complex or simply the ILS complex, thereby releasing the laryate intron as shown in the diagram. So this way, we get the RNA splicing, where introns are excised out, and we get the fully functional mRNA molecule in the end. And here in this diagram, we can see all the events and reaction in one place. First is the assembly, then we have the catalysis, followed by ligation, and finally we have the disassembly of spliceosomal complex. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up to support my work on Patreon or YouTube and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.